this chapter is on bones and skeletal tissue. So why does it matter? Why would we want to cover uh, skeleton and bones? Is that understanding bone anatomy and the process of bone remodeling allows you to work effectively with patients with bone diseases such as osteoporosis. So we're going to start with the uh, skeletal cartilages. Uh, the human skeleton initially consists of just cartilage, which is replaced by bone, except in areas requiring flexibility. So early in development, uh, our skeleton starts off as cartilage, and we'll see uh, that a little bit later. Okay, so uh, what are the, ba the basic structure and types and locations of these cartilages? Something we've covered in lab already. Uh, but skeletal cartilage is highly resilient. Uh, molded cartilage uh, tissue that consists primarily of water. There is no blood vessel or nerves. Uh, there's a structure called the perichondrium, which is a layer of dense connective tissue surrounding the cartilage like a girdle. And its function is to resist outward expansion when the cartilage is compressed. Uh, and this perichondrium does contain blood vessels for nutrient delivery to the cartilage. Uh, the cells of the cartilage are called chondrocytes, uh, and they're going to be surrounded by or encased by small cavities called uh, lacunae uh, within the jelly-like extracellular matrix. So over here we have our cartilage model, and above we have an image there, and here you see the perichondrium uh, right here in this area here. Here's the chondrocytes within the lacunae, and then you have the uh, extracellular matrix uh, and then uh, for a uh, little clarification the, di uh, the diagram version here shows uh, the perichondrium there with our chondroblasts these are bone forming cells uh, and then once the cells have grown cartilage around them and they become trapped within the lacunae they are called chondrocytes uh, so there's three types of cartilage found in the uh, uh, skeletal system. There's the hyaline cartilage, uh, elastic cartilage, and fibro cartilage. And this is something we've seen in the lab. So uh, this diagram over here does show uh, the locations. Uh, so the red uh, fibro cartilage. The green is only two locations for uh, elastic cartilage, the epiglottis in the respiratory tract and the external ear. Uh, nasal cartilage, costal cartilages along the ribcage, articular cartilages and joints are all locations for hyaline cartilage. Um, so does the hyaline cartilage do provide support and flexibility and resilience? It is the most abundant type and uh, again we find them in joints in the ribs uh, the costal region and the uh, respiratory area the of the larynx and the elastic cartilage similar to high end cartilage but it's going to contain uh, more elastic fibers and again we find this only on the external ear and in the epiglottis and then fibro cartilage is going to be uh, it's going to contain thick collagen fibers uh, and has great tensile strength. We're going to find these in the meniscus, or the menisci of the knee, and the intervertebral discs where there's lots of compression. Uh, so cartilage does go through different kinds of growth. There is uh, apositional growth and then there is interstitial growth. Uh, in apositional growth, uh, cartilage forming cells within the perichondrium are going to secrete a matrix uh, against the external face of the existing uh, cartilage. So this is going to represent outward growth. So here a new matrix is laid down on the surface of the cartilage. So this is how uh, the cartilage can grow uh, from the outside of the, uh, of, the, of the cartilage itself. And then there's the interstitial growth. And I found a model online for uh, interstitial growth here. But here are the chondrocytes uh, within the lacunae would divide and secrete new matrix expanding cartilage from within. And so uh, the new matrix would be made within the cartilage. So here we have uh, our chondroblasts, uh, then they become chondrocytes uh, once they're trapped in the lagoon. And then within the cartilage itself, the chondrocytes uh, divide 
and then as they divide each one starts to build new matrix around uh, uh, each of the individual cells and then so the cartilage grows from within so that would be interstitial growth uh, so car uh, cartilage can uh, become calcified so the calcification of cartilage that's going to occur during normal bone growth in youth uh, but can also occur in old age. Uh, so our skeleton starts off as cartilage and then it can, uh, uh, much of that skeleton is gonna be converted into uh, into bone by uh, uh, calcification processes. Uh, but uh, hardened cartilage though is not the same as bone. So what are the functions of bone? This is something we've covered before. Uh, there are seven important functions. There is support uh, for the body and for soft organs. And then there's protection. Uh, for example, vital organs like the brain, spinal cord, uh, heart, lungs, and so on. Then there's movement. The skeleton serves as levers for muscle action. And then um, there's uh, mineral and growth factor storage. Uh, the skeleton does store calcium and phosphorus. And then uh, the skeleton is also involved in blood formation, a process called hematopoiesis, uh, which occurs in the red marrow, uh, found in uh, certain parts of the bone. And the, it also stores uh, fat or triglycerides, and that would be stored as yellow marrow. And hormone production uh, for osteocalcin, which is secreted by uh, bones to help regulate insulin the insulin secretion, glucose levels, and metabolism. Uh, there are uh, 206 bones in the human skeleton, and they're divided into two groups. There's the axial skeleton, which we've seen or will see in the lab, and the appendicular skeleton. The axial is the long axis and is colored brown here in our model on the right. And then uh, the appendicular skeleton is uh, the lighter color, the beige colored. Uh, por portion of the skeleton. So the uh, axial skeleton is the long is along the long axis of the body, includes the skull, uh, the vertebral column, and the uh, thoracic cage or the rib cage. And then the appendicular skeleton includes the bones, the upper and lower limbs, and the girdles that attach the limbs to the axial skeleton. We can uh, classify bones. Uh, and these bones can be classified based on uh, their shape and size. So we have uh, long bones. These are going to be longer than they are wide. Uh, so here's an example of a uh, long bone. Uh, then we have short bones. These are cube shaped bones, uh, the wrist and the ankle. So here we have the talus of the ankle. Uh, there's also special bones called sesamoid bones that form within tendons, uh, like the patella. And uh, these do vary in size and number within, or can vary in size and number in different individuals. There are flat bones. These are uh, gonna be thin, flat, highly uh, curved. They include the sternum, the scapula, and most of the skull bones. So here they, we have the sternum there. And then we have the irregular bones. These have complicated shapes, uh, including the vertebrae and the hip. And so here we have it looks like a lumbar vertebrae, uh, vertebra from the spinal column. 